What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I apologize again. I hope the vibration is better. I got the camera up off the dashboard now, but I got it jimmy rigged on this mount, so I don't know how well this is going to work and if it camera's going to bounce all over the place. I'm hoping it doesn't, but I need to just, um, I need to get online and just look for the right mount for inside my van. Anyways, if you saw that video I did, I'll drop a, a link in the description below of that deck. I'm finally done with that. Completely done. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I think it was a combination of the heat and running into a few material issues, waiting on a couple things. It just literally fried my brain. And um, yesterday, I didn't do any work at all. Because I'm like, I just, my brain needs a break. So don't be afraid if you can feel yourself getting on the edge, you know, and just feel yourself running on empty, just stop. Take a day off. Take two days off if you have to. Three days off. Whatever it takes because, man, sometimes some projects more than others can just drain you. At least it does for me. And I just like, I, my brain was so fried. I'm like, I got to just take a break, man. Um, also, too, you're going to hear vibration because of that ladder rack I have on here. The wind is crazy with that thing. And my buddy has the same one, and he said if you put a board down the middle, it's gonna stop that. So hopefully that's not too noisy. But anyways, it just fried my brain so much, I'm just so happy to, for it to be over with. And I'm moving on to the next thing. And I got still got projects backed up. It's not like these smaller projects that you can knock out in four hours or knock, knock out in a day, you know? You gotta be there every single day, and eight hours a day, in order to complete it in a timely manner otherwise you know you'll never get it done and even though i was there every day it still felt like it just took way too long and you know you you, you got to be there you got to be working on it if the customer sees that you're not there working on it like what am i paying this guy for so man it was just tough and like i said in the uh my other video it pushed back some of my other stuff and you know i don't mind doing these bigger projects but it really takes me off my game and off my efficiency uh when i take these bigger ones on because you know i'm to the point now where after five years the projects aren't going away you know they're not going to go away um i'm just going to keep getting more and keep getting stuff tacked on so it's hard to keep everybody happy when you got a big project like that going on and you got these smaller things going on you know because you're like all right cool i haven't had a phone call in a week that's fine great because i'm working on this deck anyways and then it's like boom 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 and everybody wants everything in a row especially now that the season's going to start changing so it's tough um, but it really takes me off my game off my efficiency you know i'm just running to the store a little bit more and it seems like i'm bouncing around much. It could be just me, but that's just what I feel like when I do these bigger projects where I'm on, I'm on the same job site for you know a week or whatever. And maybe I'm just not that efficient at it. That could be it too. I could just be more efficient at doing these smaller things and knocking these out. But anyway, so today there's nothing that's going to fry my brain today, I don't think. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward job. It's a customer I've had in the past. And uh, that's the other thing too, I'll, I'll get customers and I, you know, I'm like, oh cool, you know, they'll probably be a regular customer and then I won't hear from them for, you know, a year, two years. I haven't heard from this customer in two years and they just called me back saying he needed uh, some gutter guards put on his gutter. So that's what I'm gonna do. These are metal gutter guards, they're from Menards. Basically you put it on there and then put the front part on, it kind of holds tension there and then you put uh, three self-tapping screws in each one of them. He wants them on the garage and the whole house. So. You know, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, so it shouldn't fry my brain today. And I shouldn't just be, I shouldn't be drained mentally uh, when I'm done. So we'll see how it goes. He's got all the gutter guards and I got all the fasteners. We went over there and talked about it and, th and this customer of mine has another house in another state. So he'll leave uh, at the beginning of November and won't come back till the springtime. So obviously he's somewhere warm. But when we're talking about it and he goes, well, how much do you think you're gonna charge me? And I give him my price, you know, right away he's like, well, okay, but you know, I got another house down in um, another state. I don't wanna tell you guys a state, it doesn't matter, but you know, it's nobody's business where his other house is. But 
I got another house down in this state, and every time I go down there, there's always something wrong when I get there, and da da da. I'm like, you know, that sucks. But at the same time, that's not my problem. I'm not gonna charge you less because of your situation. Unfortunately, I can't do that. If I did that for everybody, then I would be. I wouldn't even be in business. I would be out of, out of business. So you got to take that side out of it and just realize you're just running a business. You want to be uh, successful at it and run a successful business. And by giving um, people breaks uh, in your pricing, you're not going to do that. There's no way. So, you know, he gave me a story, but at the same time, you know, my price is my price. Here you go. And I told him, I said, don't rush into it. Think about it. Let me know. Give me a call if you want me to do it. And then sure enough, it wasn't even a week later. He's like, put me on your schedule. That could have be the part of the tactic in them too, trying to see if you're going to lower your price. But I personally have never once done that ever. If somebody says that I'm too high or, um, oh gosh, you know, well, I got this, this, and this going on. I need it done cheaper. I don't budge. I say, no, my price is my price. Uh, you're welcome to go get other estimates. And uh, that's the way I do it. All right, guys. I spoke too soon saying, oh, it's straightforward. It's straightforward. So... But I didn't notice when I was here the first time. You guys can see that. It's a double layer roof. So here's the new ones. Here's the old ones. See how that's curled up underneath there? So I got the first one in, but I gotta like lift up and then get it up under there so it's touching this drip edge. And on top of that too, these nails are all pulling out along the whole gutter. So I'm pounding those back in too. But I just went along, just got one screw in that one. I'm laying out a few pieces, so I got a bunch in a row. And then uh yeah, so we're doing this side of the garage, the other side, and then the house over there. So the garage is all done, and I'll show you what it looks like and tell you a couple things. So, there you go. Now, a couple things. They just say you put it in there, go downwards, it keeps tension on this back end to keep it up, and then you just screw on the front. But the problem I'm running into is this is a triple layer roof, okay? So new, old, and there's more old under there that's curling over. So I gotta break all that off in order to get these up underneath where they need to go and then fasten them. The other thing is the ends, okay? This is what they want you to do for the ends. Now this is just for demonstration purposes, I wouldn't actually do it like this. I know that looks like crap. So they want you to cut like that, bend this over two inches and then tuck it in. And I'm just like, how could that work? Because if you're not just perfect here, stuff could get caught in there. So what I'm doing is, I'm just butting it up and leaving just ever so slightly overhang over the end of the gutter. Um, instead of doing this, I think one, this looks terrible, and two, I can't see this being any better. One last thing, I'll tell you um, my personal opinion on gutter guards, and I'll tell you exactly what I told my customer. So. I just I don't think it's worth it to me because um, I'll show you with this piece why but I just don't think it's worth it I think if you clean your gutters a couple times a year um, that'll prevent stuff from getting trapped in there uh, between the shingles um, degrading away and getting in there the leaves anything else debris that can get in there sticks and stuff and also Another thing is having larger gutters. The standard, I think it's four inch gutters. When you got trees, they just don't cut it. On my garage at home, I put in the bigger gutters and um, that just is the only way to go. I put those in, those things never get clogged. The house ones always get clogged. So here's what I'm talking about with this. That's all fine and dandy. It's not gonna trap the leaves, but all that other debris it's gonna get trapped in those little things. And then what do you do? How do you get that out of there? So I don't know, just not sold on it. But these, anyways, I explained that to them. They still wanted to do it. And so these are the ones that I'm using and these are from Menards. Now that's the way they're supposed to be hanging over. Just like that. Compared to that one, which they cut the shingles, they started them short. So ain't much overhang compared to this one.
All right, guys, that's all finished up. Like I said, I'm not sure how I feel about it, you know. You can only get it so good. You see that one's up just a little bit, but you gotta jam it in there and then push it down in order to get the backside to hold because nothing attached to the backside. And as you can see, I put this little overhang on here instead of cutting it, bending it, and putting it inside. I just thought it was silly, so. That's the last stretch and uh, fix that little corner and try to bend it in a little more and that's it. We're all set. Whole house and garage done in one day. It was 210 feet, I think. All right, bada boom, bada bang. That took me uh, five hours to get that job done. And like I said, I'm not sure how well those are gonna work. I don't know, I can't swear by them. And, um, you know we'll see what happens i told him keep me posted let me know what goes on this fall and everything this he, they leave and go out of state like i said but i said let me know how well they work and uh maybe i'll stop by i told him and just take a look and see if it's keeping the leaves off or not but anyways um that's the reason why i charge the way i do and the amount i do you know why because history repeats itself so i was there did the job and when i was done he goes hey do you mind looking at one other thing for me? And I said, sure, no problem. You know what I had to do? I had to get up, crawl up in the attic, and all I had to do was change a light bulb. But that's why I charge what I charge, because most of the time, there's always something else that they need done or want me to look at while I'm there. So just keep that in mind. You guys can do it however you want, run your business however you want for all the handymen that are following my channel, but that's just what I do. Uh, if I get finished a little sooner, yeah, I'll cut them a little break. Like, ah, uh, it was this instead of that. And then people are just, I tell you, that's another good selling point to get more business is when you come in under what you say, now, sometimes you can't, but the time that you can, um, customers just, they think it's the best thing ever. And I get where they're coming from because whether it's five bucks or it's 50 bucks, you know, taking less money out of their pocket they're they're happy so anyways the job went pretty smooth except for that little issue with the old roof there on the garage and the other thing is with those things you got to they tell you in the directions to like put it downward put pressure on it and then set it down then screw it in and it seemed to work for the most part so anyways guys hopefully you got some other video drop them comments in the comment section below Give me that thumbs up, hit the like button, and I always forget this part. Share my videos, man. It's really helping me out. And there you go, something else fell over. It's really helping me out, helps me keep the channel growing, helps me keep doing videos. Oh, share those videos, guys. All right, I'm out of here. We'll see you on the next one.